So let's begin with a discussion on the site survey report. So let's talk about what should be in the site survey report. Um, I always start with a description of the facility where I've actually done the site survey. I'll talk about the buildings, the floors, etc. And again, you want to list exactly where the sites are that you've been surveying, where the sites are that you'll be deploying equipment. Always good to put in the survey report what the customer's needs are. So you've collected that right at the beginning and just stated here, is this a voice network? Is it a data network, etc. Then you want to put in the recommended equipment and you want to be as detailed as you can. You want to talk about what the access point equipment is and where they should be located. You want to talk about the antennas that you're using and if you're using external antennas, which direction should they be placed in. You want to give a very detailed description of the network cabling that you'll be using to connect the access point. The mounting requirements, very important here as well, like are you attaching it to a ceiling, to a wall, uh, above the ceiling, what mounting equipment do you actually want. We're going to talk more about infrastructure requirements in a moment, but you'd also put in all of your infrastructure requirements, any switch upgrades, etc. If you are expanding an existing network, you need to look at upgrading your licensing, potentially on your wireless LAN controllers, your Cisco appliances, etc. Or maybe it's a brand new installation and you need to look at licensing in general to make sure you have enough licenses to support all of the access points that you want to deploy. Then I always like to put in an information about the tools that I use when conducting the site survey and a description of the methods that I've used. And again, I think that customers find this very informative. It also gives a very professional feeling to the report itself. Then implementation details, again, showing diagrams where exactly the access point is and think about this from the implementation engineering perspective. So someone's going to take these diagrams and they're going to use them to say, okay, here's where the access point should be. Here's how the antenna should be directed. And then what kind of findings you found and what kind of recommendations that you're going to make. So for instance, you might say you found certain interfering sources. And so in this location, maybe you want to avoid interference with microwave ovens. And you may say I'm recommending usage of these channels, etc., in these regions. So you want to talk about your findings and your recommendations. And again, those are very site specific and they may differ between between different buildings and different floors where you're making your recommendations. I personally find that the report is much better received if I include a lot of diagrams and also photos as well. I find that the customer feels it's much more professional and it really helps the installation engineer that's going to be using this report. Now, of course, the report that we want to generate at this time is our site survey report. And so we're going to take a look at a demonstration now of exactly how I do that. So in this demo, I want to show you the reports that you can generate from the Cisco wireless control system. So remember in an earlier lesson, we put in a floor plan we built walls and then we did a prediction on where to place the access points. So I'm going to go back to that plan. So I'm going to come in here to the wireless control system and click the planning mode button. That brings me back to that map. And just to remind you, I'm just going to click on one of these access points. You can see here that I generated this coverage map using the 3500i access points that so they've got internal antennas. Um, also notice the power levels here that I had them generated at. 
And personally, if I was doing a plan, I wouldn't have them on the maximum power because I always think that for a deployment, you want them slightly below that. So if you get an issue, you've always got the option to raise the power up a little bit. I also generated this in both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band and it also is covering voice and data because I've got six access points in this area. Now notice up here I've got this option here to generate a proposal so that's what I want to show you in this demo. So here you can see it's giving me the option. Do I want to generate this just for the 5 gigahertz band or the 2.4 or both? I'm going to select both because I want to see all the report. And here you can start to see now it starts with the details, what I entered. So I'm planning the fifth floor in building A. And it's showing me the floor plan. And then beneath that, it has some assumptions that I've made. So it talks a little bit about VoIP phones, talks a little bit about coverage, and also the client throughput. It explains the building type options that I could have entered, and it talks about, you know, the fact that buildings and what their coverage looks like. So it's really kind of explaining the background as to what a predictive model is. And it's very useful to give this to the customer. I've got a series of assumptions there and there you can see some guidelines here on the gain of the antenna, the client transmission power, if you're doing data, receiver sensitivity, etc. So it's giving the client again some valuable information that you can sit down and explain that to the client as to how this tool works and how you came up with this prediction. So it explains a little bit about how the site survey uses intelligent algorithms. And then here, as you come down, it talks about the criteria of how it placed those access points. And then what I really like is it provides this map that shows where it's suggesting that it puts the access point. And again, there's nothing to stop you moving these access points. So if you say, hey, I've been out there and I've done some measurements and I'm going to move these access points in these locations and regenerate the heat map, you can still use this tool to generate this nice survey result, uh, giving you those placements. So you come down a little bit more. It talks here about the access points that we actually chose in this model. And again, we chose the 3500i with the internal antennas. Now, if I'd use uh, an access point with the external antennas, it would also describe those external antennas, uh, talk about whether they were directive or omnidirectional, etc. And it also gives some information about the maximum transmit power of the access point. And then what's really attractive is it now gives me the heat maps. And so this first one here is for the 5 gigahertz band. And above it, you can see what those RSSI measurements actually are. So you can talk about the minimum measurement that's required for voice. And in fact, we've put it there as minus 67 dBm come down a bit you can then see the coverage map for the 2.4 gigahertz band as we talked about before no surprises that is a better coverage because the signal doesn't attenuate as much in the 2.4 as it does the 5 gigahertz band then in addition to the heat maps it's now going to give you the data rate heat maps. And so this one now is showing the data rates that you can expect to be able to achieve across the deployment site. And so this is looking pretty good that most people will be able to get up and have fairly high data rates. That's in the 5 gigahertz band and also again in the 2.4 gigahertz band. And lastly, it just talks about the coverage analysis. And what's really nice here is it's talked about 
or they've received signal strength and it's given you some indication, hey, there may be some areas that maybe the coverage isn't good enough. And this is really important because, you know, I can move those access points to tweak them slightly to improve that. Maybe move to an external antenna to um, focus more energy in one direction to recover that area. So there's several options that I can look at. And this tool is kind of pointing me in the direction to say, hey, here's the area that might be problematic. That's probably an area I want to go and make a few extra measurements and work out, especially if I think there's going to be any interference sources there. If I've got a weak signal plus interference, I'm going to have some major problems. So this really kind of points me in the direction where I might spend, spend a little bit more time on my site survey. So what you're seeing here is that the Cisco wireless control system is capable of generating some really nice reports that I can create from my site survey and give to my customer. They look very professional and they really illustrate a lot of the things that I want to be discussing with my customer around their wireless LAN deployment. Now, this tool creates it. There's a lot of tools out in the market, including the Air Magnet Survey Pro that creates these reports. My main recommendation here is that you should choose a tool that not only gives you good, accurate prediction, but is able to create these reports because it will save you a lot of time and effort as you're trying to pull all that information together in order to hand it over to your customer. Now, this tool, potentially, you could actually generate it and actually leave it on the day that you actually do your survey right there on the customer site, which would be pretty impressive.